What's up everyone, Terraquake here, and I'm back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Trying to beat Pokemon Emerald as fast as I could with only a Deoxys was a lot harder than I thought it would be, so in today's video I'm going to do a challenge that will hopefully be easier while also still being interesting. Today I'm going to figure out if you can beat Pokemon Crystal with only one Blissey. Blissey is a good old normal type and it's the evolved form of Chansey. Blissey is an extra thick Pokemon as its HP stat is obviously through the roof, through the sky, through everything. However, that's about the only thing that Blissey has going for it. Yeah, we're not even gonna talk about that attack and defense stat. Its level up moves aren't that great as it only gets 4 attacking moves, but they're all normal type moves. And in generation 2, all normal type moves are physical, which means Blissey will be using its abysmal attack stat. Luckily though, Blissey's TM list saves it. It can get a lot of special attacking moves, which will be really nice to have. Anyways, time for dem rules. I can only use Blissey in battle. I'll have to catch other Pokemon for HM use only, so they will not be allowed in combat. No items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of battle are allowed, and of course, no glitches or exploits. You know, I really hope that this challenge is easier than the Deoxys one, so that I can actually get this video up in time. I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Blissey, and I replaced Cyndaquil because Totodile is pretty cool. I then nicknamed Blissey Thick with two C's. As soon as I walked out of the lab, I got kicked in the face by this weird dude. I'm not really sure what's up with him. Oh hey, there he is again. Too bad his Totodile is not thick enough to take down Blissey. I then nicknamed my rival No Thick because Not Thick didn't fit. By the time I made it to Faulkner, I was at level 15. Pidgey went down in 2 pounds, so Pidgeotto was out last. I went for Double Slap first, and I hit him 5 times. Pidgeotto's Gust hardly did anything to me, so another Double Slap finished him off. Jeez, look at that health for Blissey. I'm only level 15, and I already have 103 hit points. Yo, can we get some Fs in the comment section for all of the Slowpoke here? They literally had their own tails cut off. Anyways, time for Bugsy. Metapod used Harden, so it took a while to kill it. However, it couldn't even put a scratch on Blissey. Kakuna wasn't as hard to take down, but on its last Poison Sting, he poisoned me. This didn't set me up well for Scyther, as he immediately went for Fury Cutter, which does more damage over time. And with me being poisoned, I eventually lost. If I don't get poisoned though, I think I can win. On my second attempt, I got up 6 minimizes on Metapod and I made it to Scyther without getting poisoned. Scyther was able to land a bunch of quick attacks, so I ended up having to use Soft Boil to heal myself. In the end though, I took down Scyther with a couple of pounds. On my way out of Azalea Town, No Thick challenged me to a battle. And then I ran into a problem. I only have normal type moves and his first Pokemon is Ghastly. But I got the TM for Mudslap from Faulkner, so I taught that to Blissey, so I could actually hit Ghastly. I got a critical Mudslap to take him down, and Zubat went down in 3 pounds. Last out was Croconaw, and we just pounded and scratched each other until I finally took him down. Alright Whitney, let's just get this battle over with. Clefairy went down to 3 headbutts, as she hardly put any damage on me. However, Miltank is a completely different story. My headbutts don't do any damage to her, and she always goes for rollout. Since rollout is a move that stacks up over time, I can't kill Miltank quick enough. I'm going to try this battle a few more times, but I might need to grind. Ladies and gentlemen, grab some popcorn because this is the longest fight I have ever seen. I used 6 minimizes on Clefairy to set myself up for Miltank. However, Miltank still managed to land a couple of stomps, so I had to use Soft Boiled a lot. Eventually, I brought Miltank all the way down to Yellow Health, and then she used Milk Drink. I then got her down to Red Health, and she used Milk Drink. I then decided to use all of my Mud Slaps so that Miltank literally couldn't hit me. The battle went on for an eternity, and then I ran out of PP for all of my moves, so I started to whittle down Miltank with Struggle. She only had a track to left, so Miltank couldn't hit me, so I finally won the battle. This is why Winnie is one of my least favorite characters in all of Pokemon. In the Burnt Tower, it was time for another battle against No Thick. Haunter went down in two mud slaps, but not before he used Curse. 
Magnemite died to two mud slaps, and Zubat died to a few headbutts, but I was already below half health. Croconaw was out last, and he took forever to go down. My headbutts didn't do that much damage, and with every hit, Croconaw's rage was doing more damage. I ended up having to use Soft Boiled five times against this stupid crocodile until he finally went down. Man, these rival battles are not getting any easier. Right after that, I took a crack at Morty, but it's impossible right now. My best move I can use is Mud Slap, so I couldn't even take down Ghastly before he set up a curse on me. Haunter was out next, but he immediately put me to sleep, so the curse just whittled me down and finished me off. There is no way I'm winning this battle without a little bit of grinding. Finally, at level 49, I got this run. One Mud Slap took down Ghastly, and two Mud Slaps killed Haunter, as luckily he missed Hypnosis. Gengar immediately put me to sleep though, but I woke up quickly so I was able to bring him all the way down to red health before he used Hypnosis again. Eventually, I woke up and took him down. Last out was Morty's second Haunter, and I should have taken him down easily, but he 200 IQ played me with Spite, so I had to use up the rest of my PP with all my other moves before I could take him down with two struggles. That was just hilarious. Going into this challenge, I thought Chuck would for once give me a challenge, but nope, it went like it always does. I one-shot Primate with a strength, and Polyrath wasted his time using Mind Reader, so two strengths won us the fight. Right after that, I taught Blissey Dynamic Punch, so I was ready for Jasmine. Luckily, her first Magnemite missed a Thunder Wave, so two strengths killed it. Jasmine's second Magnemite suffered the same fate, but not before it paralyzed me. Steelix was out last, and I was just banking on RNG to take it down. I got fully paralyzed a couple of times, and Dynamic Punch missed a few times, but after getting some good confusion luck, I landed another Dynamic Punch to win. This battle did take me a couple of tries, but I'm just happy that I didn't have to do any extra grinding. You know, after playing through the Johto games so much, I've realized how dark they are at some points. For example, the Slowpokes getting their tails cut off, and now Electrodes being forced to use their electricity, and the only way to stop them is to kill them. Anyways, there's nothing worth mentioning in the battle against Price, since he was very easy. Besides the fact that I accidentally went for Soft Boiled when I was at full HP. No Thick caught up to me while I was taking down Team Rocket, and he decided to challenge me to a battle. Golbat almost died in one strength, but he confused me. Another strength took him down, so Magnemite was up next. He paralyzed me, and I started to hit myself due to the confusion. But Blissey was just too bulky compared to Magnemite, so I eventually took it down with a Shadow Ball. Haunter and Sneasel both got one shot, so for Alligator was out last, but he died in two strengths. Just like Price, Claire was also really easy. All three of her Dragonairs got one shot, and Kingdra only used Hyper Beam, so two strengths did the trick. It seems like the gym leaders have just gotten easier and easier throughout this run. At the end of Victory Road, it was sadly time for the last battle against No Thick. Sneasel died in one strength, so Golbat was up next. He barely hung on from a strength, but Wing Attack did nothing to me, so a Shadow Ball finished him off. Luckily, I landed a Dynamic Punch on Magneton, so he got one shot, and I killed Haunter and Kadabra with a single Shadow Ball. Last out was for Alligator, but two strengths won us the fight. Before I head into the Elite Four, here's my stats and moves. Considering how the final stretch of this game has been so easy, I'm pretty confident that I can defeat Lance. However, some of these battles will probably take a couple of attempts because I'm going to need to use Dynamic Punch, which of course, has horrible accuracy. Anyways, let's just see how this goes. First up was Will, the Psychic Type Master. Zatu and Jinx both died in one Shadow Ball, so Executor was up next. One Shadow Ball nearly took him down, but then Executor used Reflect before I took him down with a Strength. Slowbro wasted his time boosting his stats, so a couple of Shadow Balls did the trick. Last out was Will's second Zatu, but another Shadow Ball won us the battle. Next up was Koga, the Poison Type Master. Ariados wasted his time using Double Team, so two Strengths easily took him down. Luckily, Venomoth missed Toxic, so I managed to take it down without taking any damage. Fortress was out next, so I immediately hit him with a Dynamic Punch. I then got some incredible confusion luck, as Fortress hit himself twice, so I finished him off with a Shadow Ball. After that, Muck and Crobat both went down to two strengths. The third Elite Four member was Bruno, the Fighting-type Master. 
Hitmontop was able to eat a strength pretty well, but his dig hardly did anything to me, so another strength took him down. Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan both got one shot by a strength, so Machamp was up next. I was able to kill him with two strengths, but not before he nailed me with a powerful cross chop. Last I was Onyx, and I was gonna try to play it safe by using Shadow Ball, but then I decided to risk it for the biscuit by using Dynamic Punch, and it worked out in my favor. The last Elite Four member was Karen, the Dark Type Master. I missed my first Dynamic Punch on Umbreon, but his faint attacks couldn't do anything to me, so another Dynamic Punch and a Strength took him down. Vileplume died in two strengths, but not before she paralyzed me. Gengar and Murkrow both got one shot, so Houndoom was out last. I got fully paralyzed, and then I missed a dynamic punch, but eventually I landed a dynamic punch to one-shot her. Time for Lance, the champion. Gyarados only set up a rain dance, so two strengths easily took him down. However, his first Dragonite paralyzed me, and from there on out, I had horrible paralysis luck. I managed to kill his first Dragonite, but I was already down to about half health. I barely took down Lance's second Dragonite, but at that point, I was too low on health, so Aerodactyl easily finished me off. However, I have a trick up my sleeve that should make this battle 20 times easier. And that trick was Icy Wind. Gyarados went down the same way as before, but now I was able to one-shot Lance's first and second Dragonite, and his Aerodactyl. Charizard was up next, so I went for Strength as he hit me with a weak Hyper Beam. Another strength took him down, so last out was Lance's third Dragonite, but just like the first two, he died in one Icy Wind. Wow, that battle was surprisingly easier than I thought it would be. Well, that was interesting. Karen was probably the hardest battle out of that whole Elite Four and Champion run. Anyways, as you guys know with these Pokemon Crystal challenges, the run doesn't end here. I still have to go through the Kanto region and defeat all 8 gyms in order to unlock the real final boss, Red. I don't think I'll have any trouble with the first 7 gym leaders, but I'll definitely show off the battle against Blue. So here it is, the battle against Blue. Pidgeot, Alakazam, and Rhydon all got one shot, so Gyarados was up next. He only set up a rain dance though, so two strengths took him down. Executor died to one Icy Wind, so Arcanine was out last. Blue thought it'd be so funny to use two full restores when his Arcanine was only in yellow health. However, Arcanine's extreme speeds didn't do anything to me, so I easily finished him off. After using up all of my rare candies, it was time to really put Thick to the test against Red. Pikachu got one shot, so Espeon was up next. His Psychic didn't even put a scratch on Blissey, so two strengths killed him. I missed my first Dynamic Punch on Snorlax, as he set up a useless Amnesia. I then landed a Dynamic Punch, which nearly took him down, but Snorlax hit me with a Body Slam, which did a ton of damage, and he paralyzed me. I managed to finish him off with another Strength, and Venusaur went down in two Icy Winds, so Charizard was up next. It took three Strengths for him to go down, as his Wing Text brought me down to almost red health, but I have Soft Boiled. I kinda feel bad for Red. He was so close to taking me down, but I got back all that HP to take down Blastoise and win the battle. To be honest, the beginning parts of the game were way harder than the final parts. I wasn't expecting Bugsy, Whitney, and Morty to give me some problems. Anyways, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for my next challenge, but it'll probably be in Pokemon Diamond. As always, feel free to leave any other challenge suggestions that you have in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my challenge runs, then you can check out the playlist that I left a link to in the description. Also, if you want to see more Pokemon content from me, I do a bunch of different Nuzlocke series and card openings here on the channel. For now though, if you guys did enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to see more. And until next time, deuces!